ReZero and backstories are like bread on butter or icing on cake. You consume the bread and you consume the cake as is, and you're thinking to yourself, God damn, you don't need anything else. It's just so good, it's so flavorful, this is all we need. And then they drop that butter or they drop that icing, and you're saying to yourself, hot damn, how do we survive without the added extra pizzazz, the extra flavor, the extra flair? ReZero continues to improve, and by fleshing out these already established and memorable characters, the backstories put things into such perspective. And I'd say, in the case of this episode, why is it that someone is trying so desperately to keep his ideals be the ones that win. Why is Sanctuary so important to someone like Roswell? And while it hasn't completely ended yet by the looks of it, there is still a little more that meets the eye with what Roswell isn't letting off. The idea that what he fought for, the idea that for 400 years he's been in love with Ekidana, someone who he's known for less time than that, but he still sees her image crystal clear in his head. The one who saved him, the one who gave him everything to him, his ideals are absolute, and while he sees Subaru in himself, he believes that his love will outbeat Subaru's, where Subaru is saying, pry on those weaknesses where I kind of bring everyone up and give them that strength that they always have. One thing that I absolutely adored about this episode is that the bet is still going on, the idea that if Subaru doesn't complete this loop, then he will go with Roswell's plan, and if Subaru is able to save everything, then Roswell has to go with his plan. And the idea that he starts throwing it in these characters' faces, like just because you brought a pawn that wasn't a part of the board originally, which is Otto, that's not going to change anything. It's enough to shake his world, but it's not enough for him to say, okay, Subaru, you win. So he does the one thing that in any other loop would have caused someone like Garf to completely rip off Subaru's head. He brings in all of the emotional trauma, throws it in Garf's face, and once again highlighting how he's been able to manipulate things for so long. He's truly been prying on weaknesses. You can see it from Amelia, you can see it with someone like Garf, and the fact that he's not someone saying like, I've overcome everything, I'm following my boss here because he beat me in a fight. No, I'm following my boss for a very specific reason. For the first time in my life, someone has told me that my strength is needed rather than calling me weak and pathetic as you did. That is one of the most important points in this episode that really solidifies that this is probably the loop to succeed, at least for the whole mansion sanctuary plotline. Garf has 100% been secured, Otto is best boy, he'll always be secured no matter what it feels like, and even though this conversation didn't go as smoothly as we might have hoped, it also didn't end with any heads rolling, and the belief that Amelia will complete the trials, and then Sanctuary will, obviously the barrier will be gone. I think it's pretty important to establish why the antagonist, in this case it's Roswell, is so connected to this barrier, the Sanctuary, which doesn't seem that great, but then you see it from the past and what it used to represent, and you have someone named Hector coming in, who honestly, when I first saw that, before the episode even dropped, I saw like an image of him, and I was thinking to myself, what in the actual hell happened to Roswell? Are we getting like another Beetlejuice situation here where he's about to lose his marbles? The entire uh, aesthetic is exactly what we see in modern day with ReZero, and I'm very curious if that was a heavy influence, or if there's gonna be more than just like, oh, I saw one guy wearing it, so I started to kind of dress in, because even the speech pattern is very much Roswell in the present, where Hector in the past is like, what the hell is going on? This is like a cracked out, you know, someone like Roswell. And I'm like, what's going on here? But the idea that there's like this lingering threat that's coming that, honestly, the fact that seeing everyone equally scared and everyone was kind of out of the loop other than Beatrice, you have this very interesting family dynamic. You have someone like Roswell in love with Ekidana, Ekidana teaching all of them. You have someone like Beatrice who views Ekidana as the mother, and then you have someone like Ryuzu who basically is just happy to be there and considers them all family, and even if they didn't start out the best, it pretty much ended in the most positive way for her. The idea of like setting up this whole catalyst, like you knew it was going to happen, we seen her in the crystal, but to see how they got there, and the fact that they went very emotional towards Beatrice, because in the episode, before everything kind of piles down in terms of pure chaos, you look at the relationship between her and Beatrice, and you say, oh, it's very much like a sisterly bond, where one's like, I'll tell my big brother that something's happening, she's not really mad, but Beatrice is kind of stomping around all angrily, and then you see her completely snap, not able to put up that kind of facade anymore. 
saying I'm like, please don't go, we'll find another way, I'll use my doors, I will transport everyone, but why would you want to run anymore? This is home, this is the safety, and I'm ready to go. It's one of those scenes that I think if you would have shown us this backstory at the beginning of Season 2, Season 2 wouldn't be nearly as memorable, because what I love about ReZero, and this is something I honestly don't recall saying about an anime before, maybe I have to a certain degree, but not to this degree. The idea of backstories upon backstories, I feel like a lot of times, like, these authors will write these characters that are whatever, and then by the end of the season or the end of the arc, you get a backstory and you're like, okay, that's why they acted like this, but it doesn't really change the point that the character's not interesting until the backstory. It doesn't change the fact that 19 episodes we had to suffer a just edge lord or something like that. But in ReZero's case, all of the characters, whether they infuriate you, whether you love them, or whether they make you cringe like even Subaru in Season 1 with some of his goofy mannerisms, they're all good characters at face value. The backstories just further explain things, so when you go back to rewatch the show or reread the series, you understand why past actions were a certain way, but it doesn't change the fact that these characters were phenomenal since their introduction. Rather than what you typically see, mediocre character, pretty good backstory, then becomes a pretty good character in future arcs. ReZero, amazing or solid characters at the start, backstory comes around, pushes up to masterpiece greatness levels. That's the difference with ReZero, and I love it. It fleshes out, it expands the world, and introducing these threats of which, I mean, we got the snake that we're gonna have to deal with at some point in time, we had last week with, uh, holy shit, a character you can't even kill by the looks of it, and if you can, she gets the hell out of dodge before it ruins her. And now you have someone who makes Roswell look like a bitch. This show knows how to introduce things for future arcs while fleshing out the present and giving emotional and very hard-hitting themes that make you question, are we going to succeed? There is one particular moment that actually had me sweating, and it's where he kind of throws it in Subaru's face saying, like, I have the advantage, and I kind of just said out loud, yeah, you probably do. And then I caught myself, I was like, wait, no, we only have how many episodes left of season two? This has to be the loop. We have to get a checkpoint. We have to stop the mansion. But then he throws it in your face like that, and you just kind of want to cower, and you understand how he was able to make so many people feel weak and afraid, because that's the type of energy and dominance that he kind of throws in everyone's face. But to have someone like Subaru throw it right back, and the fact that no heads roll, no bunnies ate us, like, it honestly feels like, despite... The worry being there, we're feeling good, and ReZero's author knows how to make you suffer for weeks upon weeks upon weeks, but when it gets you to a point like this, you feel like that suffering was worth it, and we're not going to just continue to suffer for the same reasons. If we suffer again, it will be for a different one, and that will serve even more character progression in the future. This was incredible, it explains so much about Sanctuary, it puts into perspective the present so much, and I'm so excited to see if we're going to see any more about the trials, or if it's going to be more referenced because apparently the trial should be pretty easy for Amelia if we're going off of Eki Don and what she said last week. So I guess we'll see where they go, but I mean, this is incredible. It just, season two, the, like, seeing the backstories and how it kind of connects with the first half of season two, like, this is incredible stuff, but let me know your feelings down below, your thoughts, and where you think it might go in the last handful of episodes that we have left for season two. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you happy and you're around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.